I will definitely do that. Okay, uh, let's uh, convene the uh, planning board meeting uh, in the uh, public uh, session here on Monday, April 4th, uh, 2016. Uh, I'd like to thank HCAM for uh, taping the meeting. Um, tonight we've got basically uh, one customer on the, on the, on the docket today. Uh, this is a special meeting for uh, the Pulte application, uh, uh, and we will consider that. I've also got uh, a request from the uh, planning uh, uh, from Elaine uh, that we'll consider about removing a couple of warrants from articles from the town meeting article. So, uh, without any further ado, I'd like to just open the public hearing for the Northeast, Northwest, and North Club villages at Legacy Farms, which is an application for uh, site plan review uh, at this point. And we'll keep the special permits. Let's see, are we going to miss anyone if, if we open those? But I'm not sure we're going to get there anyway. No, because John's in the middle of watching the one he missed. And okay, so let's, let's not open those room. unless we have to open them up. Look, and, and then we'll... Uh, because then we don't want to lose any more members than we lose. Okay. Um, we, so, basically, we were following along on our outline, and we were basically down to, I think we, we had a couple action items, which we probably ought to do with the buildable, versus restricted parcels. And I think Mr. McDowell has provided something that I think... You just uh, hand me larger copies of anybody would like Why don't you put a couple of them out here? Larger. Mr. Chairman, I also brought you copies of some of the language. Yeah. 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 He, he's reminding us of the language when, when we did restricted land, there's about five or six categories and actually seven cases. Do you want to pass this one down? And item seven, uh, there's an exception. It says a total of not more than 30 acres of land, which may be restricted for the benefit of landowners within a particular area of the Osmond land. And that restricted land should not include land set aside for road or parking areas that are not accessory to the other restricted land uses. So basically, there is this additional category, which I'm not sure we've approved a uh, rest rest restricted land covenant for that yet in, in its form, but, but we have that option to do that. And in actuality, this particular 30 acres probably makes a lot of sense with some of the stuff that we've seen uh, in that area. We didn't do it on the south side, but and that's maybe due to oversight rather than anything else. Uh, but it might make sense to either remove some of these small parcels or apply this item 7 to some of the other areas that make sense from a, you know, a Pulte type aspect for, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a couple of play yards. Are those play yards that are kind of open to anyone that comes there or are they open to, you know, going to have a big sign that says restricted for Resident. the residents of Pulte North only or, you know. Uh, that is our plan, Mr. Chairman, just to be clear. There is a a tot lot that's, you know, just located in the center of the three villages, and we do envision that being a private play area tot lot for the use of the 
homeowners who live at in the condominium of these three villages. Where is that located? Uh, in the center, just to the east yeah. of the Legacy yeah. Park, there's a yeah. triangle type. Yeah. And uh, we do have a blow up of that with a snipe. Yeah. So, so I think that, you know, that might be, that, that was probably the example, best example of what we were thinking about when we set up number seven of, you know, you're going to have a facility for your residents only. Uh, and, and, that's okay. Uh, I think we came to a conclusion that these little st strips don't make any sense. You might make a sense that if you have land that is completely surrounded by houses, even though it's restricted, ought to be part of that <coughs> acres too. I think that makes sense. I mean, you know, if, if you wouldn't feel comfortable walking, let's try this as a test. If you wouldn't feel comfortable walking there, or you would feel uncomfortable having me go walk there when you own the house, then it ought to be maybe Section 7, or, or it's buildable land. I mean, you can always buildable land in it. I mean, you look at that strip along Phipps Road, you know, there, there's... I don't know, 20, 30 feet behind the guy's decks. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, it might make sense, and I think it would be very helpful to the committee, if we took a plan and color-coded what we think might fit that category of 30 acres, mm -hmm. and bring that plan back to you, keep that as a sort sure. of a subset of that whole category. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think we can happily do that for the next meeting. Okay. I mean, I don't know whether you want to use up all 30. You, as master no. developer, are going to use up no. whatever. No, I don't think we'll come anywhere near 30 acres, but I think you bring up a very valid point that these areas that if it doesn't pass the sort of comfortable test, it probably should be part of that 30 acres. Yeah. If, if, if you don't want somebody else trespassing back there, you know, yeah. then it's, it's, a, it's, it's more of a restricted area. And, and maybe color-coded as to which category each one of these is going to be into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean... Okay, so I think why don't we skip by the unless anyone any other questions? Brian, you were concerned? No, no thank you for this. Okay. So now if I get to my outline, which I've lost my piece of paper here because I've got there we go. Okay, so we're in any comments on the public on that? Did I miss anyone? Okay. So we'll, let's let's go on for there. Okay, the next one I think is we were talking about cuts and fills, and <coughs> I don't know if you came prepared to talk about that tonight. Yeah, I can get into a little bit more of cuts, uh, cuts and fills if you like. Yep. Okay. So, what I've, um, I'm going to put up on the, the board here. It's just a couple of color-coded plans. I'll, I'll start with each village at a time. Um, but actually, before I, before I start, I was explaining last time that the way everything was, was set up, the, the site's generally, generally balanced is how we developed everything. Uh, there'd be a little bit of export from this site, a little bit of export from, from, from this village, and a little bit of import from this one, generally balancing everything out we had. To get into a little bit more detail as to how that uh, that's happening. I'll just run through briefly each um, each village. So what you have here is the color-coded plan that essentially, if you look at the green colors, they generally represent fill, really in five foot five foot bands, and the orange and red uh, is is cuts. So what you can see from the uh, th this village here, um, and again that would be the northwest village. The that's site, a northeast village. Uh, excuse just me. Clarify. North, northeast. Uh, the Northeast Village. You'll see that along the um, these areas here, we have some of the, the orange uh, and red colors. That's where the majority of the cut comes in. The site slopes down to the from the really from the front to the back. So you start getting a little bit more of the, the fill back in here and then back in here. Uh, so generally speaking, the majority of the fills are in the zero to five foot range, and the cuts are in that range too. Uh, you'll notice some of the deeper cuts are just where we have the foundations. We've actually mapped those uh, mapped those out just to really get more of an accurate number. Um, so really, that's how this site is is put together. And again, we've got the zero to five foot um, 
bands here really to show the differences on either on either side. Um, again, the grades are about 462 along the front of the uh, of the site here, and it heads down to about elevation 425 as you start heading down um, down this way. So again, we're sloping back down into the uh, into the site. We're kind of cutting into this area as we do that. Uh, with again, with the goals to be to really balance the cut, cuts and fills um, on the overall parcel and within the sites them uh, themselves. Okay, so what's the net y yards coming out of that site? Because you said that was going somewhere. Yeah, out of out of this one, um, I would guess it's about 20,000 20, yards or so from, from this particular site here. And that material would be used in the north um, west village. That is correct. So the, the small export. So, of, so of this that is site. north north east to northwest twenty k yards. Okay. You're essentially just transferring that. So twenty thousand yards. That's a thousand truckloads. No, two thousand. Two thousand truckloads. Ten yards a truck. No, maybe more than that. What's, what's a truck? The trucks are about 16, 18 16? Yards. Okay, so it's, it's a thousand truckloads. So switching to the next village. Actually, look at this one first. Again, switching over to this village here, North Club Village. That village, when you start, it, it's kind of cut in half just to give you the uh, the bearings. Right over here is the match line, which is down here. Uh, so again, if you're familiar with the site driving by, you start heading, uh, the, the grades kind of come up sharply over here. So the way we've designed this, we're trying to get up as high as we can uh, to a high point, high point over here. So you'll notice in this area is where we've got the cuts on the site. Then what we try to do is uh, come back down and balance everything out so you've got the fills on this back side. Uh, again, similar. The the colors are the same as the last. For every zero to five feet, five to ten. That's kind of how the how it shows. Uh, again, this would be a, a net cut on the site, and that would then transfer the fill to uh, to over here. From a uh, from a grading standpoint, you're approximately everything kind of slopes down slopes down this way. But you're 434, 444 over in this area. And then it comes up to about 474 over here. So again, we're trying to climb up um, within the, uh, the the guidelines to give very specific roadway slopes and all that. And we're well within the uh, the guidelines for what's uh, uh, what's allowed. Um, so taking over at this point here, we come into uh, this village. You'll notice that I'll take one of these boards off. It's getting a little too full. Well, you were making that change. You asked the court, you mentioned that the slopes are changing on that one. Uh, what is the grade <coughs> elevation change or the, like, you know, 2 or 3 percent, 4 percent grade change? Um, for the, the roadway? Yeah. Um, the roadway would probably be above 5 and a half, uh, 6 percent at the, at the highest point coming up. Yeah. So. And what's Ash Street, Ken, coming up? What's the gradient over by? Is it a little bit steeper than that? I don't know. I don't know. Check. That's this one of the steeper roads is the one off of uh, Spring Street that goes up into that first subdivision on the right if you're going south. Yes. And that's closer to close to ten percent or it's right at kinda of at the maximum. Yeah. And that yeah. goes up quite if, a bit. If any of you have driven up Phipps, yep. you know the Phipps is probably about twelve percent. So it'll just kinda of give you a basis. So it's about half that half height. Half. So yeah. six percent is actually very comfortable. Yeah. If you try to stay under nine, for sure you try and stay under ten. Yeah, yeah. I think the regulations right to allow you to go to, to 10 percent, I believe. But we are, uh, yeah, we are below that. Yeah. My my treadwell mills now at 12 and a half percent. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty impressive. That is <laughs> a year and a half ago, it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, but thank you. So this is the um, essentially the interface point between the uh, these two uh, villages between the the, the, the North Club. Uh, in the northwest village, so taking over where we left off. So again, as I mentioned, as you were kind of coming up as high as you could to limit the amount of cut that you have over here, so you start doing that, now the land starts really coming coming back down. 
So that's where a lot of the fill that we've generated from here and here, that excess material, gets placed under this area. So you'll note we got predominantly the, the green color in here, as this is mostly fill, short of this section back in here, which we do have some, some cuts in this area, and then just a tiny bit over here. Again, this was the area where we had a very nice, um, some natural features of some rock outcroppings and, and some nice trees in here. So what we really wanted to do was try to keep that natural feature right in here. So I really built around that as opposed to just kind of clearing that out. Probably would be a little bit easier to build, but I think we thought it would be a nicer feature between these uh, series of homes if we kept that, uh, that swath of land. And again, the different shades do represent the five foot differences. Brian, you had some questions about kind of roadway, and maybe this this chart here could kind of. Yeah, I mean the questions that I had. I know we ran into some issues with roadways in the in the um, south side, mm -hmm. um, and we were able to overcome that. We had villages that I think it was the first village as you're coming down off of um, East Main off to the off to the right. Uh, was a separate village, and then there was another village south of that, and they ended up getting connected because there were some grading issues. And I guess my my thought was, if there were a way to connect this, you don't have these long runs. You know, I mean, it it just provides the residents another way to navigate through. Um, it also provides um, probably my 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 guess would be easier. Uh, entrance and egress for emergency vehicles. Uh, I'm not sure I follow your connecting in here. Is what you're saying? Right. If, if what 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 if you have, you have what, three what, dead what, ends yeah, and they what, all hammerhead. So to, to explain a little, really a little bit more, um, it's kind of hard to see from this plan. But there's as you come in here, you've got a boulevard entry uh, located here. At this point here. There's actually a, a loop that comes around through here. So this is fully connected in this area. Um, so then you have essentially a small uh, dead end here. You've got a few homes here. And then this section uh, over here as well. All of which are below the, uh, the threshold requirement. Um, I think it was 1,000 feet is what would be um, the, the, essentially the maximum amount that you can have. We are, we are under that on all of those. Um, we actually did have some earlier plans where we looked at, you know, making this a much bigger loop. It's kind of hard to see from where you're standing, but there's a significant grade change in here. So um, I'll do this and then I'll be able to see better. Yeah, to cut that through essentially would be getting rid of this whole area over here and have to do a uh, significant amount of blasting. We wouldn't be able to save the, um, the vegetation that we so want to save in there. Yeah, yeah, this, this is one of the areas where we actually have some, some <coughs> nice trees within the, the areas of the development. You can see the existing tree line in your in your white there, but there's it's a huge swath of woods there, which is you know there aren't too many areas like that that are on that are on the site. And we have reviewed this with the um, with the fire department. We looked very closely. No, I, I know. I saw the reports, and I saw that he was okay with it. Yeah. I just I just didn't know if by making a connection, it made it easier for you know turnarounds as opposed to the hammerheads, which can always be tough to negotiate. Yeah, we actually we um, we worked very closely with the fire department. We actually increased the uh, the size of these beyond you know, really what the turn template showed, just to give them some additional uh, room and, and comfort with the maneuverability. Um, so I think it, it actually does work work well. And uh, oh, by connecting oh, yeah. that, I think it actually really causes a little bit more more <laughs> harm than good just from the you know the overall feel of the of the neighborhood. Okay, John. It's Mr. Chairman, yeah, go if ahead. If I may, so, John, you might explain the cul-de-sac that we have uh, designed in too. That that is true. Um, again, we've, as we started uh, talking, we've made a lot of changes to these plans, kind of working through design review and whatnot. So we're really accommodating uh, and collecting everything. We'll be coming back with some revisions to the um, plans. Uh, one of the changes, uh, based on a comment from this board, the one to try to get more cul-de-sacs uh, within here. Uh, and we actually have a cul-de-sac proposed in this area as opposed to the um, as opposed to the hammerhead. Um, and we looked at it some of the other areas over here. This one's very small, and it just would require uh, a lot more development out this way. So it didn't quite make sense. But the way it worked out here uh, for this longer stretch here, there actually is a uh, 
it's a cul-de-sac show. But you're, the way you're drawing your finger, it looks like you're going into the white, but but we're not. We're That's actually correct. the cul-de-sac will fit within that we'll footprint that, that we've area. already identified. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're we're within this area, and I think Matt can show that a little bit more. Yeah, part of his right. We we have a summary board to the left that shows kind of a a conglomeration of all of the design changes that we're proposing for this next round of iterations. I started to touch on it at the last meeting, but we've highlighted that area in that orange circle right down there and actually drawn in a potential cul-de-sac configuration for that. So we'll, I'll go through that more mm -hmm. uh, in a few minutes when we, we, we get we into some of the small, design issues. small uh, subdivision where somebody started off with a hammerhead and they actually found out he, with the cul-de-sac he had less impervious ground with it, with, with the cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, lo we looked at each area specifically. We went around the plan and we identified the area that, that John pointed to where, where a cul-de-sac would fit within the, within the land. And, and we looked at the other areas and what we were proposing and how a cul-de-sac would work there. And, and, they, and for a variety of different reasons, they just, they just don't. Um, so uh, it, we did look we did take that comment and we looked at each area specifically to see if we could switch and it seems where, where we've ended up and what, what we're currently proposing is works best with the land. And just one more point on that I think uh, maybe to the chairman's comment about the, the other site is there uh, is now in place a new uh, fire department regulation that is requiring not only wider uh, roads the minimum of 20 feet which we're um, agreeing to um, reflect on, on all of our roadways in this next revision that, that John and Matt were just talking about. But there's also a larger turning radius uh, for the new, I think it's an E110 uh, fire apparatus. Uh, and that larger turning radius, which again, well, we've had a number of meetings with um, uh, fire and, um, and actually the water department too. But um, that has uh, required that our intersections be tweaked a little bit, made a little bit wider, and that the shape of the cul-de-sacs, and we'll have two when we get to that point in our plan. Uh, Matt has an um, exhibit on both of them, uh, the one that John was just mentioning that we added, and then the one that had been there from the beginning uh, in the uh, northeast uh, village, the northerly part of it. So that added to the surface area of the cul-de-sac. So. Um, just a, a, you know something that has changed recently that um, you know, actually we weren't aware of, but but now we're taking that into account in our planning as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so questions on cuts and fills. So basically, you're expecting to see most of this to be gravel and dirt as opposed. Where, where's the rock coming out of this? Out of these? Yeah. It's, it's Anticipating a little bit up in this area here. That's so, right. so if you're going to be doing crushing on site, you're probably going to be doing crushing in that area. Yeah, it wouldn't. Um, I mean, it wouldn't make sense to do it. Some of the, uh, you know, certainly not the. Well, well, why don't you yeah, go through so, all so, three so, of them? Certainly talk. not over here, but this is where the work is happening. It would likely make the most sense. We're not anticipating so, anywhere. So, with with that, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. we're currently working on a construction management plan that we discussed about it that's okay. on the list and that the board has asked for. Yep. So um, you were in process. We didn't have that ready for tonight, but we hope to have that ready for the next board meeting. Okay. And and maybe as part of that construction management plan, we could identify the rock crushing and the staging and some <coughs> rock pile locations as I'm, part of that plan. I'm sure people are really interested in that one. Uh, if I can just yeah. mention about that. On this site, unlike the south site, there is really only one direct to butter. Mm -hmm. That's Mr. Mezzet. Mm -hmm. um, and we experienced a lot of problems on the south side with rock crushing, noise, dust, dirt. Um, it seemed they put the operation right next to where the abutters were. Out of the whole site, that's where they put mm -hmm. it. So I am sensitive to not wanting to move back and forth across the road. But if you've got an operation like that, um, I, I would just recommend that you respect the one butter and try to keep the most noxious stuff away from the one house that's affected. We, we've had those discussions with the Mesits. It's the only house there is. Well, that's 
There's three. Yeah, yeah three. but you're, you, you know, you get close there, you're also going to be close to Wilson Street, too, or if you mm -hmm. go the other way. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, you, uh, you, I'm, I'm just well, not to, not to design it, but, you know. There's, there's a lot of Please be there. sensitive, because we are. <laughs> we'll put a lot of thought in, into the construction management plan, and, and we'll, I think we'll come back with a... Hopefully what's are, are there any concerns that the board would have that they can address in the construction plan? Other than well, we're getting through a lot of here? these Wait. in our list, which I would hope, but uh, but just to help him out, so he's not doing duplicate work. I th yeah, I think, yeah. Mr. Well, they, they know all the problems on the south side. You know, I, I think you bring up a very good point, and, and Mark and I have had this conversation. He's going to come up with a preliminary plan. I have a lot of institutional memory about what went on on the south side, the good, bad, and the, the ugly, if you will. So I think before he finishes his plan, I'd like to go through with them to be sensitive to some of the concerns we have on the south side to make sure that we don't have those concerns on the north mm -hmm. side. I think that'd be great. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're we're not mindful. We are mindful that we'd like it to be done efficiently because if you can move it once and take care of it once, we're all happy for that because that will be less noise and whatever. But wherever the rock crushing is, you know, I heard the south side of my house uh, on Ash Street, but yeah. you know, it's it's also a certain hours and you know, it, but it's it's part of the. Making omelets, I guess, you know, breaking eggs or something like that. Mr. Chairman? Yes. It, is it possible to see these uh, plans online? Do you have them? Will they be posted as part of the notes, minutes of the meeting? Uh, they should be, yes. Um, yeah, we can send those to you. To kind of close out the, the cuts in the fill area for tonight, with, with this construction management plan, can you? Put a table summarizing where, where, what, what's going where. You know, just so we just don't have to kind of remember kind of the presentation. But you know, maybe part of the construction management plan is you know for this part we're going to be moving mm -hmm. the twenty thousand cubic yards from yeah, here we'll, to we'll, here, and we can definitely do that. We'll, and we'll put some uh, generally where it's where it's coming from, where it's going. It's, uh, and and also if you've got a, a lot of material coming from offsite too. You know, I don't, I don't know what that requirement is. Uh, there's some people that have also talked about sensitivity for that. I assume that the access to the site will be off Legacy Farms Road for any material coming through there. Probably not coming from the north side because you won't, big trucks you won't get under the underpass. But, uh, but I assume you're not going to be using Wilson Street for. Are, we're not intending to use Wilson Street. Yeah. No. Okay. In in Phipps Street. Um, I don't believe we're intending to use Phipps Street for any um, big construction earthwork vehicles. Whether there's some um, you know pickup trucks or workers that access that area. I mean, we certainly like to keep those options open, but I don't see us bringing trusses or or um, hauling trucks or earthwork trucks up Phipps Street. Okay. We can include that into the management plan. That'd be good. Okay, let's. Uh, so let's see. Let's let's go on to the next one that we got on the list. How much land can we work with one time without cover, and how long, and whether well, seasonal restrictions are needed? We had a tremendous problem with dust mm -hmm. blowing on the south side, and I think maybe we'll we can either talk about it tonight, in, in general, and just saying we want to greatly reduce the amount of dust. Uh, <coughs> it also seems to me that once you get to a certain point in the fall, you either got to cover it up or, you know, stabilize it in one way or the other. And I mean, we're talking about 100 acres or so here. And, you know, that's, you know, I don't know how many, you know, what, you know, what a number of acres open at a time uh, makes a lot of sense. And stuff that might be just excavated for f foundations for the next year needs to get some kind of cover on it, I, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, 
I think I think it would be beneficial if uh, Mark would come back with a color-coded staging plan that will not only show you the stages of takedown every nine months, so you'll see the progression of what's happening when, but probably subset that into how you plan on constructing it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to defer all these topics, but this <coughs> construction management plan, that's another topic that I think we're working on so that we can pre present a comprehensive Mm -hmm. you know, proposal of how we intend to, to build uh, mm -hmm. this development and, and that, you know, the open areas and the temporary stabilization and temporary seating would, would certainly be be an aspect of that plan. Okay. It makes sense. I mean, you get project plan, you have different swim lanes, you can just identify in a timeline what that swim lane, when's it going to be done, who's going to be responsible for it, when it's going to be completed. I mean, and, and these can be not necessarily in like real time like this is January through mm -hmm. whatever yeah. but in general it's a sequence type thing that you know if I sell 45 homes this year or 60 mm -hmm. it kind of adjusts but yeah. before I break ground here this is covered up mm -hmm. or built or you know I guess they have a software program yeah. that actually does all that yeah, I would hope so <laughs> Okay, uh, we're going to go by the by the construction management plan in its detail. Um, simplex versus duplexes on the north side, good or bad design? And this was a philosophical one. We wrote the question, and part of the reason that I think we wrote the question is the inherent question of simplexes take up more land per se and I you know I think from the type of living I like the simplexes on a personal level so so I, I'm, I don't know whether I'm writing this rhetorically or not but if we end up having a geez we can't fit it in type of thing I think that's the first thing that gets either simplexes, duplexes, or you know, maybe a you know, the original master plan special permit was was looking at uh, quads and things like that. Yeah, go ahead, Claire. Well, I, I'm not sure what your question is. Are you saying that geez, we can't fit in that they might decide the well, simplexes wouldn't fit? I thought this was all well designed. Well, if, for example, we've got some trail connections, et cetera, yeah. that, you know, if you've got to, if you've got to come up with an, another 100 feet of linear, linear on the road, it, you, get 20 feet, you get 20 feet per simplex out of the equation or like right. that. So we have an approach to this that we'd, we'd love to run through. Okay, go ahead. It, it sort of ties into a lot of the work we've been doing at the DRB and behind the scenes up to this point. Uh, that might start to address a lot of the outline concerns that are in this mm -hmm. document. Um, and I wondered if we could just take a few Go minutes ahead. and kind of run sure. through Absolutely. this collection of, of ideas mm -hmm. uh, because they all sort of rely on each other and tie into each other. John, let's move your colorful earthwork exhibits. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Try not to hurt your eyes. <laughs> So, to this point, the, the documents that you've seen, the, the plans you've seen, we've, we've built in a little bit of flexibility there because the footprints that we're showing for these simplex units and these duplex units are uh, a standard shape and size, but we have some flexibility in which uh, units ultimately get built, some of which are narrower than the ones that are being shown on the plans currently. So, Ken, to your point, uh, some of the uh, dimensional sensitivities in trying to provide trail connections or trying to provide pocket parks or trying to provide some of these other amenities to break up some of the density, uh, we're going to be able to do that through this next round of, of um, design where we're actually focusing on which specific units will go where. So the, the plan you have here, which was part of our uh, response to the beta comment letter, uh, which I believe everyone has a copy of. 
um, was sort of a summary of some of those design ideas that w we are going to be incorporating uh, in response to those. Um, so a few that I'd love to run through quickly is, is one is the incorporation of additional pocket parks. Uh, we had already provided for one uh, <coughs> in this village, the uh, Northwest Village, um, and we we heard Beta's comments and, and listened to the DRB's um, discussions, and we've we've agreed to incorporate an additional pocket park in other neighborhoods as well. So we're, we're providing one here, here, and here. Um, and if you look on, we've provided kind of a blow-up exhibit in that beta response package that starts to describe what those would look like. Which is essentially taking a corner such as that or such as this and creating some green space that's open to the public, that's connected by walks that are along the main streets, provides some open lawn area and some seating with shade trees and benches, and then uh, fence and lighting elements that create kind of a little sense of place on some of these corners. So this would be sort of a prototypical design for those other four parks that I, I just mentioned. And through kind of the reshuffling of some of these units a little bit to, to gain some space where we can, we're going to be able to create uh, these open spaces. So that'll be part of this next. Uh, and approximately how large so, is that little park, mini park? This park is probably about 4,000 square feet or so, mm -hmm. right around there. So if I look down, that make it easy for me, right? Is that uh, 100 yards going? No, the, the roadway is, yeah, is 20 100. feet, so you're talking... That's 20 by 40 by 40 or something? No, I don't know. Yeah, more, more like 60 by 60, no. okay. I would say, right around there, right. Uh, give or take. You know, they could be a little larger or smaller depending on which corner they, they land on, but, uh, you know, that's a that's a six-foot bench in scale, okay. just so to give you an idea of what that is. So to get to the those buildings are 64 by 60. Right. So that's, yeah, that's, that's probably even a little larger than... Than 60 by 60, yeah. Maybe more like 75 by 75. Oh, so it's a gathering point. Yeah, not right. Thing. Right, a mm -hmm. little place to Bigger walk than this around, one. gather. Mm -hmm. Twice size, it's not. So that's that's one of those elements that we'll be incorporating uh, into the next round. Mm -hmm. um, we've also looked at uh, one one of Beta's comments, which we agree with, is that you know the parallel roads here. Uh, start to feel a little bit rigid and um, we might be able to get a little more creative with how that roadway works to make them a little more curvilinear like you see in some of the other roads within the community. So we're also looking at creating you know, a, little, a little bit more of a curved uh, scenario on these two parallel roads right here. Uh, you can see the new locations for those homes in pink over the old location in, in white below. So another way of kind of breaking up the density, breaking up the, uh, the linear view of the, the homes as they relate to the street, they step in and out a little bit more and create a little more visual interest. We've also looked at areas where we can um, stagger some of the homes back. Those are highlighted in, in these blue areas here. So, in some cases, we'll be, uh, we'll be taking houses a little bit further off the street rather than, than lined up next to each other, so that creates little pockets for additional planting and a little visual relief as you're, you're looking down the roadways. Uh, we've identified um, several locations where we'll be uh, providing that treatment, which are also outlined on this this summary plan. Uh, John already mentioned. Can the, you do that on both sides of the street? That was or, yeah. Oh, good. We, yeah, we are. We're doing that on on uh, both sides where we can along this side of the street here. Well, yeah. the, 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 the board you, the board you just showed. I'm sorry. What was that? It was the board you just showed. You had it just on one side. Yeah.
Right, we were doing it on the side of the street where we didn't have another row of homes uh, behind us here. On the, the north side here, these homes back up to other homes that are uh, along the top of the page, so it becomes a little trickier to do there. But when we get into that level of detail, there are some units that we can use that are a little less deep than the ones we're using here, so we'll be able to provide some of that variation just by changing the, uh, the unit type in those locations. Uh, we've also looked at enhancements to all of the entries into the site, um, and this ties into um, kind of a neighborhood identity package that I'll go through in a second, but uh, within each of those project entrances will be incorporating uh, sections of fence, uh, street signs, uh, decorative plantings with a lot of seasonal interest, um, light posts that, uh, that will be decorative in nature, and then street trees and ornamental trees as well, um, which also tries to kind of break up the view along Legacy Farms Road and provide those uh, impact entries into each of the different neighborhoods. And if I could just add, uh, Matt, yeah. I mean, those types of concepts are things that we've worked out with the design review board and a number of meetings that we've had with them. And, you know, I just feel compelled to say that they've been very helpful, very open, very cooperative, and kind of brainstorming different ideas. So, I mean, I, I appreciate, our team appreciated the, the time and the thoughts that they had, and I, I think they've uh, helped us to improve, you know, some of these details of the plan. And that where, was one Claire, that where are you, Ace and Design Review? Are you done with this? Uh, not done yet, but we're making good progress. We had several, several meetings, and uh, okay. this neighborhood identity was one of the ideas that came out to give it a little more character. Okay. Um, one of the other comments from the, the beta review letter and our discussions with DRB was trying to eliminate. Um, the scenario where roadways come to a T intersection with a, a unit directly, um, directly in kind of the line of, of headlights. Uh, so in each of these red circle locations, we'll be providing additional spacing to try to uh, break that up, and that also gives us a chance to introduce some of those landscape enhancements that I, I mentioned that we'll be uh, providing along the streetscape as well. We're also looking at uh, creating a little more space at this corner here uh, to provide a pathway connection through. Uh, I wanted to highlight that as well. We were looking at um, this corner right here providing a pathway connection that allows access through the neighborhood. Uh, so we'll be separating these units a little bit to create more space and then also providing uh, sections of fence to sort of guide the uh, the walker through those locations. So what is Phipps Street on that plan, Matt? Phipps Street is right here. So that is intended to tie in to the end of Phipps? Correct. Yep. While we're talking about the end That's of Phipps, good. What's the possibility of putting the cul-de-sac that I think we've seen for for the end of Phipps? And I think there's some talk about the, from the, I thought it was from the police or fire. That yeah, and the note said they were satisfied, but they were the ones that were asking for the turnaround. Well, well that's part of our discussion we're having with the Mesin family. Because currently they have three homes on the street. They're actually contemplating the possibility of a fourth. So... Mm -hmm. We'll come back to you with our thoughts with the message on that issue. Right now they have a parking lot at the very end beyond Wayne's right. house. And Wayne is not quite sure if he's leaving it or removing it. So we'll, we're going to have that ongoing conversation. Okay. Um, to that point and talking about the simplexes and all, um, and I like the fact that you are providing some simplexes because I think you want to have a variety of products so that you can appeal to a variety of 
of customers. Um, and in our discussions with Pulte, they explained how they uh, their strategy behind some of the groupings that you know simplexes kind of want to be with other simplexes. You might want to be in sort of a single family neighborhood as opposed to a townhouse neighborhood. So that that sort of make made sense that you've got the styles sort of clustered. Um, but on that North Club Village uh, again, I know Mr. Mesut had suggested that where you know you do have these single family homes existing on Fifth Street, um, there is a bit of a of a incongruity if this becomes the other neighborhood to have these single families butting up against multifamilies and on that you've got a bunch of simplexes that are down at the end of that road and then they kind of wrap around the other road. Um, I, you know perhaps you could look at um, continuing that concept of a single family neighborhood abutting Fifth Street and clustering. Right now the singles are sort of spread out. Perhaps you could cluster some of these uh, duplex or, or multifamilies together and keep more of a single family in that area to be uh, in harmony with the single family. I know there's screening there, but, but nonetheless, um, you know, Mr. Mezit did suggest mm -hmm. that and it seemed would it would seem to make sense in terms can of I, character. Can I ask a question just so I'm clear? Are you talking about what they're calling Oak Street? Uh, yes. It's it's what's uh, yes. it's, it's North Club Village that backs up to Phipps Street. Oh, the street parallel so, okay. to Phipps. So if yeah. I could just update the board yeah. in, in response to Claire's question. So at the last planning board meeting, we received a comment letter from the Mezzet family. Right. Uh, with several items, and one of which was the turnaround, and the, the other one of the other items was the simplex. the unit, the simplex yeah. units. So since the last meeting, we've actually met with the Mezzet family, uh, and we've gone over um, their letter, um, and our office has um, started to consider a response to all of the different mm -hmm. items, and we've and we've um, and we've talked to the Mezzet family about that, and they were going to get back to us with some comments on on what we've and what we sort of offered. So. You know, I I think at the next meeting we'll we'll have a response to all of the uh, all of those items. But we've we've made a proposal, and we we'd like we think we've uh, addressed a lot of their their concerns that were in that letter. And we'd like to hear back from the Mezzet family when they have a chance to re review what we've offered to them with their families um, before you know our our proposal sort of final, sure. I guess. But sure. but we think we're addressing or we're trying to address a lot of the concerns that they brought up in their letter to the board. Okay, well that, that's good because, I mean, uh, yeah, I just want to be responsive to butter concerns, mm -hmm. but just from a planning standpoint mm -hmm. and from your own philosophy that you explained to me mm -hmm. about creating neighborhood clustering um, and where you are <coughs> backing up to a neighborhood of single family homes, it, it, that seems to make sense just from a planning standpoint and a, and a consistency standpoint. Um, so I, sure. I would like to see that. If you can. Well, we're talking about architecture and things like that. How many different simplex designs are going to be used on the north side? Two hundred. <laughs> we have seven. <laughs> so, um, there are seven different floor plans that we propose for for simplex style homes. And and some and of, some of those are some. Same as on the south side, or are all these are all news? new? Design? They are all different than the They're south side. Okay. They are all new. And each of those seven different uh, floor plans, we build a variety of different ways um, so that in the end, the, the architecture that we submitted, there's 48 different um, front elevations of simplex units with varying uh, architectural elements between those. And then um, so that's just the simplex, and then for the duplex, there's... So it's 48 divided by how many simplexes total? There's... But they're going to have a choice, so it doesn't mean that they'll be evenly distributed. Right. You could have six buyers that all want the yeah. same house. You're not going to say right. no. So those are choices, but you may not get them all. Well, we had some kind of rule that was on the south side that basically mm -hmm. said... No, no co two colors the same, and mm -hmm. and some kind of variation on every. Yes. I mean, your choice was a little bit restricted in that you couldn't be exactly like your neighbor. Right, right. and we're intending to maintain that same type of variety. Is, is, that, is that working out role. well? Yeah. Are the sales guys working with that? It's challenge. 
It's a challenge. Sometimes people have to wait to purchase the home they want in a location that's open. And sometimes they go someplace else and find something else because they can't wait. Hmm. But they're working through it. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. But I think it's important for the overall aesthetics of the whole community to keep that, to keep that variety. Yeah, the variety is the number one people. And we're actually working on another new design that um, you know we we might want to offer there as well. Okay. We haven't, you know, it's a it's a bit of a fluid thing. All of these uh, simplex designs are new. We haven't built them um, in this market at all, so uh, they're new designs, and we're anxious to to roll them out. And see how well received they are. and trying to come up with is uh, good identities with uh, this document uh, but this sort of breaks down the, the in relationship to each we've <coughs> these are going to be the uh, for our own thinking ourselves, but we're calling the Hillview neighborhood characterized by its own its own set of flowering trees, uh, its own fence type. It's going to have kind of a natural cedar finish fence type and all the pocket parks and entry features. Um, the garage doors? The, the garage doors will be, you know, selected by the owners, but we have several yeah. different styles of one of the things that will revised architecture is styles of, of garage doors. I think this was in response to one of the beta comments. Um, we're going to distribute the community the different styles, and then we're also planning to those on each of the garage door types. So effectively, we'll have four different garage door styles um, so, in the community. Which so that all for the variety with, with crossbars on them. Like they will not all have crossbars. That one of them will have crossbars, sure. and then the other one um, it does not have crossbars. More mm -hmm. of the um, there that you, that you see it has the hinges in from the sides, and then mm -hmm. it has the handle mm -hmm. uh, in the middle. It's like a carriage okay. store, so it's a little bit different. And then when you add in the windows on some, it changes the. So that would give us some different And one variety. of the other things to add on what Mark was saying is that we have um, determined that the painting of the doors um, is going to be a little different than what we've seen in the past. So we're not going to leave the cross bucks. We're going to paint it the similar color the house to help it blend in the jump out as an accent. Just two different ways of approaching it. This is uh, some uh, handout that... Um, Going through, right? That's right. So that first page breaks down those different neighborhood districts. Uh, so the, the first one, the Hillview neighborhood, that would have uh, calorie pears, horse chestnuts, uh, honey locusts, and tulip trees, kind of the main, the main street trees. As I said, the, the So which village are you in? Hillcrest, uh, the Hillview neighborhood. Hill so those are the, the hill village. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just placeholder names. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold it against us. Uh, but we tried like, to like tie Oak in Street a family of, of site improvements and fixtures that would reinforce a character there. The fencing is uh, split split rail cedar, uh, cedar street signs, and even, um, cedar posts for the light fixture uh, that, that would all have that kind of rustic. Accent planting at the uh, the main entries to these neighborhoods. Uh, flowering material would be in the white. Uh, we're trying to introduce a different um, Western Nurseries mesic uh, plant species into each of these entries as an accent feature. So, neighborhood as you go through this package has its own. Um, hybrid or, or seedling or variety of, of shrub that was developed by um, by the Mesic family over the years. So I think that's a nice 
way to incorporate the history of, of the site into the, uh, the overall design. Very cool. So that's the, uh, the hill view neighborhood. If you look at the neighborhood, purple variety. Uh, we use the eastern redwood red as an accent. <coughs> uh, the fencing is this cedar split rail. Uh, and the street light and street fixture on a wood post, very different style. Who comes that up in here? That is Eastwood Acres is purple. The purple plan there. Hey Matt, I didn't hear what you said. So that would be a, a cedar fence that we as opposed to the vinyl? That's that right. was a plan. Right, and that, that the we play, received. That's you see those at those entry features that I pointed out. And also in the pocket part, these elements will be incorporated there. Well. But just to be clear, how did, at Design View, I know we discussed. Did you want to have a certain number of vehicles that were uh, neighborhood? But I think you said no. You were going to open it up for all or whatever to be limiting certain looks to certain neighborhoods. The housing styles are going to be throughout the correct? Mm -hmm. It's fair to say right now alternatives, yeah. but right now we're we're just uh, concerned that you know we have a very large um, uh, community plan. Mm -hmm. Obviously the and the um, time span for Construction mm -hmm. and sales and occupancy and completion, <coughs> you know, is a relevant time. <coughs> and aware of, you know, two things. First and foremost, we want it to be successful, and the feel of the town, and as and uh, we, in order to do that, it needs to be able to satisfy the marketplace. The buyers that are in our area, in our community, uh, we've been. I think uh, I feel we've been very um, successful thus far uh, in needs on the south side. With uh, and you know, we're, we're a different palette. However, I think it's it, we feel it's important anyway to have the the simplex and the duplex number of varieties that we have and to maintain mm -hmm. so that we don't come grinding to a halt mm -hmm. with a particular if we make if too cemented and too in the location or how or uh, mm -hmm. that that might um, it might not give us the flexibility to apply the market mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it if you sense that you kind of rely on say, you know, house seven, elevation B is going to go here, and elevation C will be right here. Mm -hmm. That's for it. It's, it's, um, and it's and it's driven by that, you know, the kind of to be flexible enough mm -hmm. so that we can shift to change with the marketplace. And we know it's changeable because we've, you know, we've seen that in the past and well, we me... know we are in the, in the economic cycle now. I'm sorry. Let me make. I'm lost. Sorry. Go ahead. Right. Want to hear comments? To review plans and, and you, you say you want to fit in with the town. That's what. Yeah, that's what we're, we're both here for. Uh, and you're looking for a certain level of flexibility. Um, <laughs> yep. You know. I don't want to judge what you're saying, but often when I hear that, it, it seems to be I've seen. So that's all. I, th I think, though, in this variety. I mean, and so the the more design, or and and putting it and have place to determine what it is. Too many of us on the board that that would disagree with with that idea, 
The other thing I would offer is three or four years, and, and by the way, I think you've been incredibly on the south side. I think faster than anyone on this board that permitted that. You know, you're building more homes than we thought we, you know, than, than I think you guys when you said you're south side, you know, you're which is all good too because it's done that we're all happy with that if you come back in a couple of years and you say geez our architects got really busy because of this other project and five more simple lines that we want to add to the mix more or less fit the overall I think this board's been happy to do the projects here you know the original developer did this and you know a couple two and three times with new designs and you know, I could, geez, we want to add a porch to this one because we've done the sales and, mm -hmm. and, and we've pretty well approved just about every one of them with with a minimum amount and you know and it's not a major site review or something to change that flexibility in the future if you come back with something that still fits into the site plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate that. That's, that's, I mean, that's great to hear. Yes, you know, variety. I think you know, if if, if anyone goes on the south, I'm going to say is they all look the same. That's that's the that you know they're. It's a it's a very compact site. I knew that coming in. I don't know how we envisioned it. Any different whatever but yes the um, one kind of understand is you know you're looking at the front of the houses and the variation and that's what when you drive by <coughs> when I drive by the south side what strikes me more as repetition of the rear of the houses is getting an understanding <coughs> on the rear and the variations it's more so than going up the various I see the backs. Mm -hmm. There may be variations, but when you drive by, boom, 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 boom. So that's a good point. And one, how do we address that? As we're addressing that and why this is different than the development on the south side, uh, the topography is kind of our friend in this case mm -hmm. uh, as it relates to the way homes are sited. So you're, you're never getting the full expanse of the project when you drive up Legacy Farms Road North. You're, you know, here as you're driving up, you're in the So your, your views to that neighborhood be both buffered by all the education that's being maintained here and the fact that that sits up above you. As you come to the next village, uh, cascading down it's not level, it's stepping on the hillside. So again, you're not getting a view of, of the entire neighborhood and we're, we're maintaining existing vegetation zone and also enhancing it with screen planting. And then uh, as you get to the this is also not at the same level as Legacy Farms. Photography is really serving to um, lay out the way we're we're bubbling out this neighborhood diagram. You're you're really gonna get the sense that separate little uh, enclaves within within the overall master development just because of the way those homes are sited and, and buffered. And I think just uh, so to that's add, part of it. Just to add to that your neighborhood there where the units are perhaps the closest to um, the legacy farm north road we're proposing a uh, significant um, along there, right, right off the bat. We've been looking at the possibility of uh, facilitating, enhancing that with a berm. A berm combines sort of a serpentine effect to berm with the landscape to to really address it. Because we, we are very, um, to, to what you brought up, and, and we know exactly what you mean. I think too, didn't you on those rear elevations architecture with some windows and I seem to recall looking at the elevations and the rear sides were had a lot more visual interest than the 
the, the ones that the we've ones designed the for the North. Yes, yes. Uh, can I make a comment? Go ahead. Uh, I want to can you, you really summarize say off. I didn't really do a really good job. I totally agree with, and it, it summarizes my feelings on, on this project. Okay. Um, and then uh, what you guys are saying about, you know, you ha are paying some attention to the variation in design. I really appreciate what you're saying. Um, it might be helpful to, to us uh, to see a, uh, is it a landscape painting, painting or illustration. This is what it will look like when it's done now that we've done this. It's, it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So we can see it different angles. Because on the south side, when you're driving on Clinton Street, that's, and this, I think, I pay more attention to these details, but it would be, it would help us. As a I think a couple things that might help okay. visualize it for us is maybe a couple down the hill on a couple of these pieces so we can kind of see. Absolutely. We, we've actually no, done, done that in yeah. response to the okay. uh, beta had that same comment. Okay. And, and we uh, we did create some of those. They'd be in the package that, uh, that we had. received from, from a it wasn't tonight's package that yep. we just handed out. Yeah. That one, but I do have copies of the board. We might be. Do. Yeah. We might be better off. Well, we can do some of that tonight, but we that when you present the final version mm -hmm. next or the mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, the, the new plan. the updated yeah. plans. Sure. Yeah. Um, sure, that's fine. But I think in concept, you know, Matt has it right there. He could just a minute. Well, I can okay. show you. Now. Okay. Really you know, his request was that we provide looking from Franklin Road. Up into the project, so you or what it looks like from the street. And really, it's a trick very much. So, this is the pre development view looking right where it would be <coughs> this red circle, looking up at the end of the end of Oak Street right here. So, that direction that's in the after view. You can see made the houses in there in 3D. Uh, in their proper location, at the and we had to actually uh, post back the existing vegetation. You could see where those actually sit, but the, the real view from the road, these would be screened by this ex existing vegetation. After view are essentially exactly the same. When you go through, meaning remains. <laughs> the vegetation remains. We just faded it back Got in it. this. In okay. this. Uh, illustration to show you where the house actually sit in, in relation to that view. So that painting is actually, you can see all of that existing vegetation. Uh, it really is all the way up. Your first view in this neighborhood really isn't until you get in, in North Street right here that you'd actually uh, be able to see. Uh, but even then we're going to be providing Along with the street trees that are of the Legacy Farms Road, we are also providing additional evergreen screening at the backs of those homes once that tree cover is no longer in your view. Our proposed evergreen tree cover picks up there. So that was one of the the requests was to provide that perspective view, and then sections which are in your package as well. Not not what I just handed out, but it would have come uh, with the uh, beta comment. Sorry, I have so many sheets up here. One second. After we all. So we, we did cut through on the plan, and we actually went uh, with beta, with um, with Elaine, uh, to determine where they'd like to see those cross sections. And this is the the strategy, and then this is the result. Section A, section B, section C, uh, through F. So A is through 
village here. Shows the change in grade. Uh, it shows the roadways, Birch Street, Street, and then down to the property line uh, here, and then the, the solar farm and the, the mezzanine land down there. Section B is like this one right here. Let's cut through the section through our proposed main the homes on either side, and then the the distance down to East Main Street is actually almost 2,000 feet, so it's a ways away. Section C is mentioned to you. So these are the last homes on on this little hammerhead extension here, and then it's existing grade and existing vegetation to Franklin Road. This is the tree cover that basically to see the homes up at the top of the hill. Then section D section D is right through here. And this is the Mesa property back here. Uh, and then these are our first homes along Oak Street. The landscape buffer, uh, the backs of those two sets of homes, and then Pine Street, which is right here. And then you can see uh, our landscape screening that's proposed, and that's going to be remaining along. And then Farms Road North. So this is what I was talking about. Legacy Farms Road North, much lower than the actual uh, proposed homes. Section e through the northeast village, so see Farms Road North and working our way down the hill. Uh, so then, see Farms Road North up at the top here. This is that existing swath of vegetation that we'll be maintaining uh, right here. Then you see Cherry Street, then you see Cedar Street which is right here, then uh, Elm Street, which is this road here. So you can see how that terrace is down the hill away from the viewer on Legacy Farms Road. isn't getting that full view of the... Is there a variety on roof shingles? Or at least color or whatever? Is that part of the architectural plan? It's not part of the architectural plan. At the current, typically hey. they're all like a the wood blend. Yeah, that kind of just massive village development that might disappear. I'm thinking you're going down. You might be seeing a lot of roofs. If you're going down, you're going to be coming. As you come down where? Down this street? Yeah, the, the, the cut you mm -hmm. You know, is it... I think you usually try and keep a roof as much earth tone as you can. Okay. Usually. But Ken's point, that's the first key. You just see all these roofs and they all look the same. Whereas if you go through a more traditional neighborhood, the roofs have been put on by different owners at different times. And it doesn't face. Oh, that is something to think about. I mean, you're going to be anyway. That's but you true. Shingle at a time. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, a couple of color choices. And it they want to be very careful you do on the harmony. Oh, you oh, pick yeah. the you color. Know. Oh, you know, if you if you, if you pick a tan house, you get this this shingle and the brown or whatever. You know, I, I I'm not to fix colors. I'm not even allowed to do that at home. <laughs> it's also that. Solution because the darker the shingle, the more efficient uh, heat. And, uh, so. Okay. Let's. And then the last section was just through through this neighborhood right here. So same situation, Legacy Farm. I and then the 
development terraces away from you. Because, you know, particularly that, I can, I, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to be seeing roofs, you know, the, the ones in the bottom. That's my view from the top. Draw a line through, you, yeah, you wouldn't see I just them don't all. know if I see through this house, those roofs, you know, okay. your, your view's kind of blocked by the, the screen. Okay, but when I'm going down, down the... If you're coming down here, a look at it at that street, but from kind of the Legacy Farms roadside. For pub, for pub, uh, I'm, I'm also really concerned about yeah. all the new people resident. Us, uh, in the future. <laughs> okay. Can, can I ask a question? But it is something that's been discussed. Talking about um, flexes and neighborhood feel. Yep. It's, it's shame on me for not noticing it sooner. Um, quick question. Is in the Eastwood area, we have on the right side a duplex. We have two simplexes, and the entire rest of the street and looks duplexes, except for when you get to the back over by Oak Glen. Is there a reason yeah. to have those two simplexes in that one spot? That's a great comment, and, and, and that's that you picked that up. So, um, if you can point to that, so yeah. that's to do our model park. So that. That's the first street where we would we'll start building, and and there's a couple of duplexes, and there's some simplexes there, and what we'd envision is having those as our our model. We have some uh, decorated homes to show customers as they as they come to the community, and we we wanted a mall right to get the beginning, yeah. so we did look there for that very reason, and I think. And the first duplex we proposed to do is is kind of customize that garage into like a, a sales center. So so as a part of um, the south side where we have a trailer when you come in uh, off of the swine road, I think our vision envision that we'd actually have our sales office and one probably the first one on your right. That's where they would work out. Of. And then you know three or four houses built and would be would be model homes okay I mean that kind of the sales office so I don't know it kind of destroys the concept it destroys the other concept of, of the neighborhood feel yeah all right okay. Matt did you get through the I want a neighborhood vision. I don't know if no, we got through almost community. all the neighborhoods. I think we did the first. Once, once you're once you're two. done once you're done that, yeah. I want to do differently because because I want to give you a feedback before we off to do some major plan changes. Okay, yeah. really quickly then we got through the picket fence neighborhood. Um, attached to that neighborhood. Off of Eastwood Acres is kind of a little sub neighborhood called Oakland, uh, and this would have a white split road versus white. A little bit different character there. Same street light and street sign, part of the same group, um, but the, the the coloring on the sand planting would be more in the yellow, um, and then we have some. Uh, and oak, uh, Coosa dogwood uh, for street trees and flowering trees. With, uh, with <coughs> Moving on to Ridgecrest, the, uh, the purple bubble right here, North Club Village, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So the, the trees we're looking at: sugar maple, river birch, willow, selkova. And then flower and crab. Um, the street thing is more more in the black ornamental range. It's an acorn fixture with a on it. This is similar to what you see in the, um, the South Village uh, with the street sign attached right to the light post, um, and then characterized by a black picket fence. 
uh, black aluminum picket fence. And then lastly, this neighborhood names, but something to order spots with. So we're incorporating some stone elements into. Uh, so at the pocket park is kind of the entry to the neighborhood. Here. There's a stone wall feature, like a rope wall, like you see in this photo here, that's on both sides of the uh, of the, uh, as well as uh, at entry features on on either side that goes back into the neighborhood. Um, and then the street light is more of a lantern fixture on the black post, uh, and the the flowering more in the purple, uh, purple to pink range, uh, looking at purple beach for trees, uh, sergeant cherry, uh, uh, or, uh, for the street trees there. So these, as these shrubs and trees get incorporated into the common areas, into the pocket park, uh, into the street tree path. It's already part of the plans, but uh, we're going to be kind of grouping these by neighborhood as we move on. And then lastly, uh, we're also looking at street side, streetscaping in some of these areas where we're going to a little bit and provide um, not just trees along the sides of the road, but uh, little pockets of planting. Uh, in some copies of this that you can pass out to you all, but we've gone through each of the neighborhoods, identified locations for a couple of different prototypical planting treatments that, um, that here. So just uh, upright evergreens and ornamental grasses uh, that kind of break up that view down, down the corridor. Areas where you see type A in these, yes? Okay, sure. Uh, you'll see a treatment like this, and then for area B, where we have a little more space, uh, you'll see a larger plant bed with some metal shrubs, some upright evergreens, uh, even a larger you know, six-foot evergreen shrub as well, uh, to try to incorporate some additional interest in those roadways where we've got some some opportunity to do so. I'm sorry, what was your question? My question is for Eastwood Acres, as far as the trees, or the there's existing trees I see on your existing, yep. They, and these are additional uh, bushes and trees. That's right. Uh, let's change directions a little bit. There were some concerns by some members. I think Somebody must have hit me with this. I think it might have been Brian. Concern that you've got some of these neighborhoods that are pretty well in and out by one road. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I was actually just yeah. talking to mention the plan. Yeah. Could you or could you take Holly Street services Oak Glen? And get another stub to it somehow. I mean, the concern is you got a bottleneck. If something would happen in that part of the road, you've got I don't know thirty that are accessible. I, I cul de sac. While it looks kind of interesting and neat, it's a lot of homes on a cul de. -sac. Maybe connecting it back to Chestnut Street might, you know, it might might make it a, a a safer from the traffic. That that's kind of, I mean, and then kind of talked about the, the you know, Ridgecrest is 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 functioning, you know, two streets down. Down to uh, Legacy. That's in pretty good shape. 
<clears throat> your boulevard kind of takes care of that concern. And if you kind of look at it, other than the far, we talked about that earlier. Not as many homes on a on a leg with only one way to get to it. Can I just add yeah. one thing? Because it, it, in you know Hallmark Heights and some of these uh, homes from Ridgecrest, which I guess are on Street. Talking about 172 homes just feeding into Legacy Farms at rush hour. That's a nightmare, isn't it? From a, from a traffic standpoint, no issue. I think we actually have six separate connection points throughout the whole uh, you know, throughout the whole development. Um, to, to answer uh, your chairman, just um, some of the. the all this access opposed to connection um, has to do with the topography of the site. Again, sometimes that works in our favor and sometimes it doesn't work in our favor. Um, variations in it, it, it does work into our favor. For actually having everything connected, it does not work in your favor. That, you know, a lot of these, these roads are, are kind of cascading down and it's really why you have some of the roadways set up the way they are, really just to work within the grades. because substantial amount of topography within the of the uh, of the property that we did not have on the on the south side so why don't you, for our next time give me your why you couldn't put another road in parallel with Holly with Oakland in your plan where you're referring, referring to you, you right got, there you know what, what if you had one that was down got it Connecting in. What if you connect it across here, or down to here, or you know, any any way you bring it back out? Yep. We, can, we can show you some of the the, the rationale for what we have. So, so honestly, I mean, there's so there's two reasons. There one very well could be a, a topo reason why, and an engineering yep. reason. Why. And I think the second reason may have been just uh, looking at the the guidelines. And the guidance that it gives them maximum length of uh, cul-de-sacs or dead ends, knowing that when we when we laid this out with with the with the requirement. So I mean, I think that's if, probably if one we, of the guidance. If we, if we, we were doing a thousand foot on on most call guidelines are different for everywhere else. We move ten units, I believe, is our, our our bylaw. So I mean, that's that that's our our rationale mm -hmm. is more on a safety aspect uh, you know what happens if there is a blockage not that there usually is one but you know occasionally we've had streets that have washed out and, uh, you know well usually not a pull down on a but tree. tree but uh, you know so we try to the risk mm -hmm. that's not to say that this board might be convinced into it, but we'd like to be shown that one doesn't work better. I mean, you know, you, in your own mind, you already kind of maybe made all these trade-offs, but you know, and, and yeah, we I, certainly looked at iterations to get to this sure. point, but we'd be glad to share that you know, thinking with or you. Maybe, for sure. Or maybe back up to Legacy Farms Road. I mean. You know, getting, and I'd like you to kind of do a little bit of traffic work to these intersections, Legacy Farms Road North, to see, t tell me what two times would be expected. I mean, it's all the same single family type home, so it's once you do mm -hmm. one, you've done it. You know, you just have to add the numbers a little differently. But I'm, I'm sure there's a lot information that's already available on Legacy Farms Road North so I'm just overlaying that on there I think in this layout of our streets if I kind of remember the drawings correctly at the, each of the entrances you have a pull one or two cars or three cars or that which I think was parking mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we were asked to incorporate that. I, the, when I legacy south, I see they're picking up at both ends of the of the street. Is if if I'm not incorrect, and I'll tell you, a lot more than one or two. A lot more homes, but you you also have a school kid bogey that you know, and you can kind of distribute. Kind of tell me is one or two spots the number. It could be. I don't know. Mr. Chairman, I thought it was my understanding that once the road became public, the buses would come through, but because it's still a they're not. So might it's going to change once it becomes public. For, for the Legacy Farm South? Yeah. And the same with the North. Well, but but none of these are, are so so unfortunately no go to the bus stop at the end of the street without having a car sitting there so they can watch right I'm boy my mother let me walk to school <laughs> but, uh, and, and uh, you know it maybe that's my problem today but uh, <laughs> without their parents yeah actually that's a good point yeah, they, won't, they won't drop the kid and yeah, grandson, I have to wait out in the driveway for him on the days that I'm, I'm the babysitter. Uh, but uh, do is what we're designing. Prove to me that it's 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 enough. Yeah. So, quick question, uh, you know, coming to this point, do you think there's a possibility that the school buses would through some of these roads? Other than Legacy Farm North, I mean, why wouldn't they? Other than the fact that they're not accepted town roads, a lot of this. Assuming there's, I don't think they usually go. I don't know I, they would. Why don't talk to the uh, school department about what their policy is? I mean, we don't care. There's a cost factor, I would imagine, but you know, I'll, I th would think it would be safer. For the kids, you know, I mean, you'd be looping off the road, but if you went in, also might take them off, you know, particularly if everyone exited to be dropped off at each drive. It's ridiculous, mm -hmm. too. But well, what was the anticipated number of school kids that were going to be produced by Park Path condos and the two bedrooms? Was it wasn't going to put a lot of kids in. Right. And we're right in line with those numbers, but I think the concept is you know, if you have one kid or ten kids, the bus is still going to come. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying how many do you think are here? It's not going to be worth that. all the way down into this if there's only what What are the corresponding numbers projected for this North Parcel on kids? Why don't, why don't we have a presentation on that, or at least written would be... You know, we, we, we can do. read it and then we won't spend as much time as we can give you that. Park on Legacy Farms, but they could throw the road where they live, like they do now. You see them parked outside Curtis Road and the bus stops and that's, at 135. That's what we provided is some space at the ends of you know, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's spaces at each end. My right. question is, is it enough? A bunch of... It's two bunch and of three, units. right? Is that what we have? Yeah, Twos and threes and threes for is each one. Two or three, the right number. What I'm asking. Yeah. Well, we can look at it a little. These are public. Well, we're not streets that meet. Well, yeah. they're guidelines. You can always pull over to the curb on it. I mean, they're not bad. Well, right, right. now, to the grass. If you look well, at Legacy Farms Road north and south, no, we're on the grass. The side roads are they so narrow that a parent can't they're pull up to wait for the kid and pull over yeah, to the they're edge? Twenty feet wide. I don't think you're going to be able to park out on the street. It's live parking. It's not. You know. Yeah. I mean, so that that is a good point, and I think it's a balancing act. So we've provided two or three <clears throat> parallel parking spaces at each of the six entrances to Legacy Farms North mm -hmm. in response to the comment. But to go and add more and add all that impervious area and create a, a boulevard of pavement going into each of the entrances, I, you know, before we did that, I think we just go back to the 
typical way that it's done everywhere in town and you just pull over on the side of the road and you let your, and you and you just you're there for a few minutes and then the bus comes and you leave before before we go and add this huge bus parking lane on on all of these entrances i think that would be we should I, well, that would be interesting. We we don't envision any parking on Legacy for Farms Road North. Period. No, these right. these are on the on the private drives. I, I, that go I know, in. but I mean I, that's that's your your guideline. You're not you're not the guys aren't going to be allowed to park on the sides of, this, of, of that street because it's it's not wide enough and it's going 35 miles an hour if I remember correctly. Uh, it's posted. But a 20-foot wide side road is certainly wide enough for a car to pull over and live parking and another car coming down to get around. Get around. We're sure. not talking about a parking place where you lock your car, take the keys, and leave. We're talking about people You're sitting in the car. Sure. You're yeah. in the car well, for let's five minutes. Have, let's have them study how many, how many cars you expect to be based on the school kids in each one of these villages. And see if you got enough spots. Right, and then find out from the school whether or not they can actually go down on some of these private ways or not. That's because, like on Hallmark Heights, you've got 130 homes, give mm -hmm. or take. Mm -hmm. My math's probably off. Better not have 130 kids. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess no. The there's, is, there's a lot of risk. There's, there's the earlier there's a lot of simple like about different, different, different grades. grades so yeah, yeah. something yeah. to take into consideration. That's all. Yeah. That's but the model, I mean. Stuff goes wrong, but the whole concept behind this entire model for the Osmod was that the configuration was going to limit the number of school children it produced. You're not going to have, just because you've got 130 units, you're not going to have 130 or 260 kids. No, not at all. No, so, I'm, I'm trying know, to remember what the number is on the, on, on the south side so far. This is not supposed to be a big school age community development. Right for there, the apartment complexes were higher than our projections by some. The, the homes are actually less than projections. Okay. The apartments are more than projections. Okay. And I think that's frankly because of the twenty-five percent affordable. Okay. Uh, by the way, I think it's, we get another update from the school commit or school department in the spring. And, you know, we had one in the fall. We probably are getting close to an, an update, so uh, maybe you can get, get that. Frank? Uh, I have some, uh, a couple quick comments. Um, I'm against any of the hammerheads. Uh, I do appreciate that you guys have uh, run a rotary uh, back in there. Um, but I would like to see uh, the other uh, two hammerheads that I see here just uh, somehow resolve into a, into a, a cul-de-sac. Um, based on what I'm seeing in the response from the fire department, um, I'm also thinking that uh, with the graphics and the turnaround space, uh, I'm thinking maybe not allow parking in the cul-de-sacs because it looks pretty tight from when they have the green line for the body of the uh, vehicles. Uh, it looks it's right up against uh, one of the cars that's in, uh, in their just depiction. Um, I also want to agree with Ken very much about uh, having uh, not having a only one in entrance or outlet to any of the smaller sections of, of the map. So Hillview, definitely I would like to see uh, that cul-de-sac maybe be extended to uh, all the way to the main road or to the, the side road. Uh, Oakland, I would like to see another connection to Eastwood. Um, I, I think that could happen, uh, moving some houses around uh, easily. And then um, Ridgecrest uh, would be the hammerhead and uh, all my pipes would be the other hand I have, so um, I would like to see those improvements. Um, so, so, so I asked a question of that on the hammerhead versus the uh, circular. I mean, we've gone through the fire chief on that, and he's yep. Yep. absolutely, absolutely okay yeah, with that. If the fire chief's okay with it, why why make them go well, through this, the Well, there's a study with the turnarounds, and, and, and it's, I, I just think it's safer. I don't back up so well. <laughs> I mean, that's my preference. <laughs> and I, get that. I, can, I think that's their decision to be able to do that. They've but got the okay from the fire chief. The feedback from the fire chief leads me to think that it would be safer uh, with a cul-de-sac. Say someone came down Hallmark Heights, and they were on this, the road that's too far west, they're on the cul-de-sac. They can turn around easier. Uh, if they if they come over and they they're on the hammerhead, 
they're going to have a, that much longer time to turn around and get to where they need to be. Yeah. So it's okay. So yeah, I think, again, so can, I, can I just, if I, if I may, can I just add a, a point to that, a thought to that? Just a, a quick point. I don't know if it will be helpful, but um, when you look at Hallmark Heights, um, we did incorporate the, the cul-de-sac sure. here and supposed right. the hammerhead. And, Which I like. Thank and, you. And, 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 you know, we, and we like that, too, because there are a number of homes, and it is a, a little bit longer. But when you're, when you're talking about what we're calling Drive B and in the end of Juniper Street here. Typically, in a little common driveway, like, like these short, you know, 100 or 200 long driveways with, you know, eight homes on it or six homes on it, you know, we typically don't propose, you know, in the past, we, you know, a, a fire apparatus turnaround yeah, feature, but, you know, you sometimes you just have a little, like, residential turnaround at, at a little thing like that. Yeah. But because of the new fire department access rules that Reed had mentioned earlier, these you know we've we've incorporated these in, and the fire department you know, required those. But I mean, those are there's there's only a couple hundred feet long, and there's only a few houses on those roads. So well, um, to, to have I think the hammerheads that you have on the south side near the wastewater treatment plant, number one, look like hell. I mean, that's where all the Norway maples got moved to try to screen them. But I think they look, they're elevated, they, they fall off on a bunch of rocks. I, I think those just look, they're, th that to me was a lesson learned on, mm -hmm. on the south side, because I know I didn't fight, fight hard enough on those hammerheads. I mean, they, I think that those, that area looked not so good. Take a, well, next time you're driving through, take a look at it. Um, it, okay, let's see. We've got, let's see, what would be best to try to go through this general section here? Uh, hey, do you want to take off the list the timing of legacy bonds right in Washington? I'd like to answer that if you'd like. Sure. Okay, work has now begun again on legacy bonds road north. So the weather for the last couple of days is going down a little bit. Um, the anticipation that legacy bonds was substantially complete by mid June, uh, probably a little sooner, but let's call it mid June. In the interim, you might notice we're putting down the gravel basis for the sidewalks on property. Okay, we're going to be having the guardrail and cedar move back soon. Hopefully, the source is going to get going in that pole out on Cedar Street. And then we'll be putting the binder and paving down on Cedar Street. And we'll be bindering and paving, widening of Rafferty and the sidewalk on Rafferty in the month of April. So I would say probably by first week of May, Rafferty will be complete, Cedar will be complete. And a month following that, um, Legacy Pond Road will be substantially complete. Mm -hmm. It sounds, you've been getting any feedback from our friends at either Verizon or uh, Eversource on the poles? Uh, the latest comment I've got is the work order has been put in for the poles and it's in process. Okay. Now what that means, I have no idea. Those guys are just tough. I, anyway. Okay. Um, I think... Maybe the next time we meet, we're going to go back and talk about um, all this revised plan. I think I think it's I think it's time to, to go through that, and then we'll we'll hit each of the villages. We'll have a construction management plan, but we'll maybe we'll lead off with the revised plan, and then get the construction management plan and take all the input we've gotten so far and try to see where we're at. A um, couple things I want to talk about. We received a plot plan for the north parcel t today, I think. Uh, talk with either Elaine or Jennifer. I think you got a lot more work to do. Uh, that, that one came in today. We weren't quite sure about uh, exactly what you wanted. Well, I think we're looking for a plan of how those 60-something acres are going to get these, you know, as a minimum, 
which roads get taken out and what they get put back with. You know, uh, what 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 road are you, you going to keep the road in for a trail as as it is, or are you going to grind up all the asphalt and kind of reclaim it and put it in a four foot trail or five foot trail of, you know, ground up asphalt or whatever is there or stone? Or I think what might be helpful is we can give you a Google aerial of that whole parcel and mark it on the Google aerial. Probably take one that with the leaves are off the trees so you can see it more clearly. That, that would work and, a lot. And, and I think it, what we can do is we can identify all the roads on that plan this road goes, this road gets grown and pulverized, uh, this area becomes a meadow, this area became, becomes a woodland. Yeah. We can give you a much more detailed plan. Th and then That's some, we'll have that for your next and meeting. And then some narrative as to when does it happen. We can give you all that next meeting. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you got a if construction management does include a haul road across that, you got to talk, you know. We want to define the haul road to be pretty tight. Tight, you know. I've already suggested to Pulte that on that plan, if they have a specific location, we're going to walk it later this week. Very specifically located in that plan where it is, and they can't deviate. From it. We, you know, we might put silt fencing at all the intersections or something like that. I mean, just to keep it from mm -hmm. red fence, whatever. If you got to use that section for the hall road, mm -hmm. if you can figure out a way to not to do it, that's okay. But to get from one side to the other, it, it's got to be one crossing across Legacy Farms Road North in an area where you got plenty of sight distance. Sure. That's, that's uh, let's see what other things that we oh this is for. Boy, we were advised, or I was advised from Ray, that to take care of the athletic parcel, town meeting needs to vote on the uh, restriction or the uh, the wording to add the increase down there before we accept it. So add the what? We, town meeting has to change the conditions of acceptance from last town meeting. So we've got an article on May for the athletic parcel. Yeah. So why we haven't spent a lot of time with that, we've also t taken the words and given it to our friends at Park and Rec and the 21 or 26.2 Foundation just so that they see it before we go off and change the, the, the words. And hopefully, maybe they will discuss it at one of their meetings and come back to us and not be surprised. Until last uh, Wednesday, I believe. So. Yeah. So I, I know Mr. Kildoff is probably very busy with the uh, marathon activities at this point, and it, he goes crazy. But you know, in a couple of Tuesdays from now, he'll be all set and ready to charge off of this one. So that's the only reason we have not been doing anything with it, Roy. Okay, I mean, thank it's, you. Just because Ray is suggesting. We did get just, um, he did record the municipal parcel. We did get confirmation that that's been recorded. Okay, great. Good. That, mean, that means you're not paying taxes on it anymore? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Did we transfer it to you or just record it? You just recorded it. Oh, just recorded it. Oh, so now we'll transfer it to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, when are we set to hear these guys next? Well, so our next regular scheduled meeting is next Monday, and we have a 7.30 public hearing for the zoning amendment. We have a 7.45 hearing for a scenic road, and then we have an 8 o'clock public hearing continuation for 25 Ash Street. So we could do 9? I suppose we could do 9, yeah. Well. Have you gotten anything from Ash Street? No. I'm trying to remember whether they had anything. Oh, they had to work it out with the neighbor. Yes. Yes. Or try. Or try. I can contact them in the next day or so and see where they're at. Why don't Why don't we double book it at eight? Okay. 
and if they're ready, you're going to be on at nine. nine. And if not, you're on at eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean. Good. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to continue uh, the public hearing on the Northeast, Northwest, and North Club Villages at Legacy Farms until... April 11th, Moved and seconded over I, there. And just to let you know, I will not be at that meeting, but I think I, I can watch the tape. I think I'm all right. Oh, we, don't, we do not want to lose anyone at this point. Okay. 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 So it's been moved and seconded. And seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Now what? Can I ask a question? Um, we've given them a lot of stuff they have to provide, and that gives them only a week. Is that enough time for them to provide all that stuff? Or are we going to proceed without all that stuff? <laughs> we'll get you a lot of it. Okay. Thanks for making sure. Okay. The next motion would be to um, continue the uh, master plan special permit. For the land area for the north north uh, villages, and can I do it in the same motion? And to continue the public hearing to amend the master plan special permit um, for the 180 age restricted villages till eight o'clock on the 11th. I think it was right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which that continues our public hearing, of which we've had no discussion up today. Okay. So moved. Second. Moved, seconded. Further discussion? See none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone Aye. opposed? Aye. Anyone abstain? Motion carried. Okay. And then we've got a couple other things for Roy to stick around with. Um, Roy, can you tell us a little bit about the sidewalk in front of the Mezitz property? Mm -hmm. On, on East yes. Main Street. Thank you. Yes, actually, I had a meeting on site uh, last Friday with John Westerling, and John and I laid out the sidewalk starting at the bronze uh, statue in front of Western Nurseries and continuing the walkway pretty much on mostly on our property or adjacent to the town's property up to where Roger Mezzo's property starts. So that's been laid out. John, I think it looks great. So if you have it, just it's been staked out. Okay. So if you want to take a walk and look at it, please do so. Yes. So it's on Legacy Farms Road. No, it's on East Main Street. East Main Street, right. in front of right. the, the the historic house. Correct. In front of 83 East Main Street. Right, but it doesn't it doesn't go up Franklin Road. We're just no, no, East Franklin Main Road Street. is a separate sidewalk. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it goes along East Main Street. It goes to just beyond 83 East Main. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had a little bit of a quandary in that we wanted to meander down on Roger's property, and Roger was resistant to it. So John actually, it was John's idea, came up with a good idea, in that if we had a berm starting where Roger's property is, and we run that berm literally down to where the sidewalk ends now, along parallel to the uh, fog line on the street, we have enough room between the berm and the guardrail to put the sidewalk. So bas basically it would be kind of like it is up closer to the center of town? It's actually very similar to what you did at oh, the yeah, Golden great. Pond. Okay. Very sure. similar. And, yeah. and, and the nice thing about that is we don't cut one single tree down. Otherwise, if we did otherwise, we'd be cutting probably 150 trees down. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. So is this going over the land at all where Peach Street used to be? Or is no, this no, all no. on East Main and the new Legacy Farm? Well, actually, if you, if you start in front of uh, where the bronze statue is, right. it parallels the curb, the new curb. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got the crosswalk. Uh -huh. And then on the other side, it parallels the curb along the front of 83 East Main okay. Street. All right. And then it goes over behind that stone wall that was added. I see. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it goes down. And then that's where the slightly Before curved. or after? Before, in front of that stone wall that was added? Behind had? it. Behind it. Behind okay. It. There's not a number in front of it. Got it. And then when you get down to where Rogers' property starts, there's the street. There's a, a fog line, and then there's quite a bit of distance between the fog line and the guardrail. 
Uh, John suggested we put a berm in, so it'd be a raised, you know, six-inch high berm. It's probably a couple thousand feet long, at least. And then there would be a raised sidewalk all the way down to where the current sidewalk begins. And the nice thing is that could actually be done not waiting for you to build your, I'll call it the bridge, going into the athletic parcel, mm -hmm. because it would literally go right along the whole street. And it would not require going to the tree warden and mm -hmm. getting the neighbors upset with cutting 150 trees down. And Roger's good. And we, and we wouldn't have to talk to Roger. Good. Good. Okay. And ConCom? ConCom Con Con we'd have to go to, because ConCom, Con, um, matter of fact, the reason why I wanted to talk to you about it is if, if you seem to be okay with it, uh, we would immediately draft a plan, go to ConCom. We're not going to be going into wetlands, but we're adjacent to wetlands. Even though we're in the paved way. We just need an order condition. That's all we need. Yep. Exactly. We probably have to put in some facil fence along the certain sure. lengths. Sure. And the nice thing is it's something we get done this year. Yeah. And that, that whole sidewalk would be done. We, we, we like that aspect. Everyone happy with that, that plan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Given that, that we have that plan, then we don't need the article to accept the sidewalk easement on East Main Street. So I'd like to uh, have a motion to authorize the removing of that article from the warrant so, you know, we don't do a no action type thing and it'll take five minutes out of the meeting at least. So the hearing the selectmen are holding tomorrow will not be held if we take it out. No, 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 no. Their, their, their hearing is for... The land, about the land. It's for, they're, they're, they're talking the about... It just contains the Street and yes, the land. That's yes, right. that's a separate article. Correct. So, anyway, I entertain a motion to remove that article. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, I think... Roy, I think we've got pretty much... All set with what we got for you. I got one other thing for the board, but okay. I, unless there's something else you got for us today, I think we're moving right along. It's uh, I think construction on Legacy North is starting up again yeah. soon. It, they already started. Okay. I think the snow delayed in a few days. So. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. Night. Appreciate your time tonight. Yep. Good night. Okay. The Good second night. the second one is. Is in Lane Senate. Will the planning board be willing to authorize the removal of the article to accept a gift of land on Hilltop Road from the warrant if the donor is not ready to proceed? And she says, "I'm I'm waiting to hear from them." So I guess the motion would be to leave it up to Elaine to pull the article if she does not get the donor to ready to proceed for that article. This was a. Okay. That needs a motion. Then? Yeah, because we voted to put it on the board. So basically, we're going to authorize Elaine to take it out if 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 she doesn't get where it's got to be. Okay, so I I move to authorize the, is the director of land use planning. Is that who she what, is? Nah. Use <laughs> Whatever she is, <laughs> authorize uh, to remove this article from the warrant if uh, the Sanctuary Lane Association is not. Ready. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay. I s oh, we received a letter of resignation from Pat Mahan. We will send him our, our now standard uh, 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 thank you very much uh, letter. Uh, and so uh, I just got. And we have also sent a, or will be sending a letter to the Board of Selectmen asking for a joint meeting to consider appointments to replace those two folks. So, shortly, those people that want to be planning board members, there's two other opportunities. This will be for a one year term till next May. So, if you want to try it out before you commit to five years, there's your opportunity. We're really a fun group to be with. Are they, Sometimes. Are they both, <laughs> are they both um, subject to the election next year? So yes, I think so. I think so. Got it. Uh, All right. 
Okay, so look for a motion to. Okay. Oh, no, go ahead. I, oh. I just have one thing to yep. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Just, um, I, I would like the board to perhaps consider at a later meeting just revisiting the um, Hopkinton Center for the Arts uh, at 98 Hayden Row. Uh, they do not have any landscaping in front, and I looked back on the plans, and the plan that's on file upstairs from August of. 2015 when we did the revised parking plan still includes the 2013 plan there's supposed to be a couple trees a rhododendron and a whole bunch of ink bush berries and there is not a speck of landscaping so I asked that, about I asked about that in the middle of winter and they said that there would be something this spring but it's now spring and so can you Jennifer can you follow up I on that yes. see what their schedule is to finish that because Quite frankly, everything else, they're acting as if it's they're, all done. It's done. They're, done. they're acting as if it's done, and that was part of the deal with the abutters, not only that the parking not be in front of right. them, but that there be screening, and there is nothing. Yeah. I mean, the plan. Yep. I have one more thing. Go ahead. I'd like to invite fellow planning board members and um, the public watching on HCAM to the Hopkinton Boy Scout Troop Four Pancake Breakfast and silent auction. Uh, it's 7.30 to 11.30 at St. John's Parish this Saturday, April 9th. Good. Already good. got two tickets. Sounds good. <laughs> good. Good. I wish pancakes were on my diet. <laughs> <laughs> no carbs. Hmm. Anyway, okay. Uh, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. We'll see you what is it, next, next week. Monday. Next Monday. Next Monday. Back to back to back. Good time.